welcome, welcome to Dare to Be Different uh, Ministry. So let's give them the audience a hand clap. We welcome you, welcome you, welcome you. And I'm going to continue my lesson on hold on to your faith. And this would not only continue, but this will be the end of the lesson, which is part two. So we welcome you again. Come on, Dare to Be Different. Remember, come on, come on, come on, come on. We welcome you, we welcome you, welcome you. And we love you. So I'm going to start again with um, this powerful message from Jesus. I mean, even though it's over 2,000 years ago, his words are still powerful and effective and meaningful, meaningful for today because we need his word. It has a lot of meaning and foundation to the word of God. But Jesus said that God sent him with the doctrine. He said, this is my doctrine, but he that sent me. So the powerful message from God from the book of Genesis all the way through the book of Revelation. It is God inspired word. Come on, let's give him a hand clap. It's how we learn God's mind, his thought, his purposes, and his hope and salvation for the human race. Also, the relationship that he has and wants to have with men, women, boy, and girls. So, in Luke 18, verses 1 through 8, which I said I'm going to continue this, and um, it started with, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always to pray and not to faint saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And verse uh, 6, And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge says. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? And the last verse, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. And that's where the title of my message comes from. Hold on to your faith. We may have to let so many things go. But sometimes we have to let our jobs go. Our disobedient, rebellious, rebellious children go. Abusive husband go. We have to let so many things go in this life. But one thing, I'm not saying just don't give them up or kick them out. I'm just saying that they won't worry you. It's one thing we cannot afford to let go. And that is our faith in God. Amen. So the pastor that I mentioned in my last lesson, who uh, prophesied this dream, his name is Dana Coverstone. Whether we, we believe it or not, it's up to you. So we plan, but we, and my family, my husband and I, and our children, we plan to pick up extra food and other things, little at a time. Because it doesn't hurt to be prepared, amen? amen. Just in case. So now, uh, that being said, I want to finish this lesson on faith. In Acts 27, 29, this is then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks. So we're going to continue talking about the anchor. They cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. Now I want to leave you with this thought. The men cast four anchors out of the stern part of the ship. See, it was common 
to have more than one anchor in every ship. We're talking about anchor. When your soul not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. So in one which exceeded, now listen, I'm going to say this again. It was common to have more than one anchor in every ship, the one which exceeded the rest. It made me think about Jesus, both in size and strength. Now this anchor was called the sacred anchor. Oh, hallelujah. And was the and only used in need, in a time of need. But today it is called the sheet anchor. The sheet anchor means the great emergency anchor. And you know Jesus is always here for us in the time of need, in any emergency in our life. We can call on Jesus to anchor us in that faith. Amen. And we can proclaim, I shall not be moved. Glory, hallelujah. The sacred and great anchor describes our Savior. The anchor of our soul, mind, and spirit. These anchor they cast out to stop the ship, to keep it sturdy, that it might not proceed no further, till they could, uh, could uh, till they could lead them where they wanted to go. Now these were these anchors when you anchor the ship, and it was it, you could proceed. And I'm going to say it again. These anchors, they cast out of the ship to keep them steady that it may proceed no further. Afterwards, they can, they can get back, pick up the anchor that it would lead them where they wanted to go. They would take the anchor out of the sea. So in Acts 27 and 40, and when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the control bands and elevated the main sail to the wind, which ended to the directions of the shore. We're talking about Paul when the disciples and Paul was on the ship. Jesus is the anchor, like I said earlier, in the time of need. And he will gladly, every day, night and day, days, months, years, that he would always lead us safely out of the storm. Whatever the storms of life that you're in, let Jesus be the anchor that will lead you not only through the storm, in the midst of the storm, but out of the storm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to anchor ourselves in Jesus who is always anchored in God. So Matthew 14, 23, it says, when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountains apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Jesus is something, he had to spend time alone. He had to gird up his mind, gird up his thoughts. We get renewed strength in prayer. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea. And this time Jesus went to sleep and tossed, and, and the sea tossed with waves for the winds was contrary. And in the fourth watch, it's something about the fourth watch and the fourth anchor. We're going to talk about the sacred and the fourth anchor. Hallelujah. The, uh, and the fourth watch of the night Jesus went. Hallelujah. The fourth anchor the sacred anchor, the great emergency anchor, hallelujah, 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 went into them walking on, on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, is it a spirit? And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, if it be thou, bid me to come thee unto the water. And he, Jesus said, come, come on. Come on, you can do what I do, come on. And so he said, I'm an anchor. 
You can come to me, and I'm so anchored in faith that I will not let nothing happen to you. Amen. Amen. And, he, and he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, the strong, noisy, unruly wind, because you know the wind, when it's strong and powerful, so a lot of people say it sounds like a freight train. It's so noisy. He was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. So what did this sacred, this great emergency anchor do? And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O oh, ye of little faith, for well, what purpose did you doubt? Didn't you see the anchor right there in the wall? Then you know that I'm anchored enough not to let you fail or fall or drown or sink. He said, what, what, what was your purpose? For fear caused Peter to lose his faith. When he took his eyes off of Jesus, he took his eyes off of the one that would have anchored him safely and securely above the water. So the sacred and great emergency anchor saved him in the midst of the storm. And Jesus is the same yesterday and today. And he will, whatever storm is coming, if that prediction is true, that a storm is coming, if that song that the Lord gave me, if the storm is coming, Jesus will anchor us in this storm and take us on the other side where it'll be a rainbow in the water. Hallelujah. See the rainbow in the water. He will take us under that rainbow. Keep us safe under the rainbow. Hallelujah. And then here are some uh, important scriptures to increase our faith. Mark 9, 23 and 24. Jesus said to him, if you can believe all things are possible, to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. There's some situations in our life, people, that we may not have that perfect faith. We have a little gaps in our faith. But when that happens, you say, Lord, cry out and repent. I believe, Lord, I believe God. That you this great and almighty God, that everything is in control, in your control. So help my unbelief so that I can rest in you, so that I can have peace of mind in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The main thought in this scripture is faith versus doubt. At first, Jesus is, uh, Jesus is a character. Listen to this. At first, the Father revealed the lack of faith. Faith. He asked Jesus to do something for his son if he can. So in essence, or in other words, Jesus was saying to me, what do you mean if I can? <laughs> the problem is if you can. If you can't believe all things are possible. If you can believe that I can heal your son. If you can believe that I can raise the dead. If you can believe, hallelujah, that I can take you through the storm and bring you out safely. If you can believe all things are possible, if you have faith and not doubt. Whoa, oh, hallelujah. The father cried with tears and said, Lord, I believe again. Help my unbelief. This father literally cried. Some parts of the scripture when you say cry, it means to make a loud noise or to shout. But this man wanted his son to be delivered and we want God to come through for us. When we're going through a test or trials, when we can't overcome the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, no matter how many times we pray and fast, cry out, Lord, I believe. If you could quiet the storms and the waves in my life, you can calm. You can calm the, the lust of the flesh. Hallelujah. You can speak to the lust of the flesh and say, peace, be still. You're not going to have your way. I will not succumb to the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Peace, be still. Shut your mouth, flesh. 
I will not give you what you desire. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And Jesus was so pleased with his, the father's response. He healed his son. So unexpected and uncertain situations will cause worriness, fear, doubts, and unbelief, which are faith worst and greatest enemy. Most Christians, uh, Christians can identify with the father and with Peter dilemma. There will be times when we would have to ask the Lord, like I said earlier, Lord, help my unbelief. In Matthew 6, 26 to 34, Behold the fowls of the air. So many people know this scripture. For they sow not, neither they do they reap or gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are we not better? Are we not better than these birds? Are we not better? God created us in his image and after his likeness. Are we not better? We represent God on this earth. Are we not better? So it says, which of you by taking thought now the word thought in Greek and Hebrew means be anxious beforehand. So I'm going to say, which are you by being anxious beforehand can add one inch to your, to your height? If we can't do that, God is great. There's no, no need for us to worry about anything. He said, and by and, and why take ye thought that I would be anxious for nothing for clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like none, one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, hallelujah, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you and me and you? Oh, ye of little faith. I talked about the little faith in part one. Therefore, Jesus said, take no thought. Don't take thought. Don't receive thought. Don't receive hallelujah this. Be anxious beforehand. And what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? It is be so a blessing that no matter what we're going through or what's headed in the future, that we can rest in the arms of God. Or whether, 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 whether we be clothed, for after all these things, the Gentiles seek because they don't have faith. It's time for us to have faith in these last times. Have faith in God. Have faith in his word. Have faith in Acts 2.38 and 2.39. Have faith in John 3.1 and 1 through 7 and Romans 89. Have faith, have faith, have faith in God. Get in God. Be his sons and his daughters. He said, but seek, be, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. If we seek the kingdom of God, righteousness, hallelujah, and peace and joy is in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said, all these things shall be added unto you. We don't have to ask for nothing. Mm -hmm. Just seek God first. Take therefore, he ended it up. Say, he said it again. Take therefore no thought, be anxious beforehand for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Then he says, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So we should not be anxious beforehand about the future since each day contains sufficient burdens of suffering. Five times be anxious beforehand is mentioned in this scripture. Jesus wanted to get our attention five different times. 
in five different areas. So anxious means fearful, nervous, anxiety, or worried. Beforehand means in advance or ahead of time. So the number five is a symbol of God's grace. The number five is also a number that symbolizes God's kindness and favor to humankind. So grace changed your way of thinking. So we ask for God's grace. It will change our fears into hope, change our doubt into belief, change our anxiety to joy. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9 to 11, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul had went to God three times because he had this thorn in the flesh that was troubling him. And God said, my grace is sufficient. When I thought about that scripture, I said, grace is sufficient. Grace is sufficient. Grace changed his way of thinking. Mm -hmm. See, grace not only means God's favor, but it gets into your mind and changes your way of thinking about the situation that you are dealing with. Glory, hallelujah. His grace was more powerful and more stronger than the affliction that was in his body. Glory, hallelujah. God's grace. And down through the years, hallelujah, I have asked for God's grace. Hallelujah. God's grace. I've been through tests and trials and tribulations. I'll tell my sisters, I said, I have had been told, but it's grace that has kept my mind in peace. It has grace that has me to stand still, be unmovable, always abiding in the faith and the work of the Lord. God's grace is sufficient. I'm a testimony. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Most gladly, he said, therefore, I have rather glory in my uh, infirmity. He said, I rather glory in my infirmity so that I can have the grace of God that let you know how powerful the grace of God is. Hallelujah. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul proclaimed that he, he had, since he had to again endure suffering, he had the grace of God that changed his way of thinking about the situation that he was in, the thorn in that flesh, hallelujah. And Hebrews four and six is another powerful faith scripture. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Grace is just as important and powerful as being anchored in God, anchored in Jesus. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 2, 1 and 2. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And Romans 5, 13, it says, Now the God of hope, which means faith, fill you with all joy and grace and believe in that ye may abound in hope and faith through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And Mark 11, 12, and then drop down to 18, 18 to 22. Mark 11, 12, then verses 18 to 22. And Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in God. Jesus, that was the last um, powerful scripture for Faith. It's, I'm quite sure there's many more. Now to go back to what Jesus was talking about the widow. Jesus placed very important emphasis on Luke 18 and 6. He said, yet because this widow troubles, that means she worried, the, the judge said, me, I will avenge her less by her continual coming she wearied me. That means she drained. She kept going, kept going, kept going, and kept going to the judge, like I said in part two. 
Because she not only believed he could, but she knew he would. Whoa, hallelujah. And that's the same faith Jesus wants us to have. When we go to God, believe that he can and that he will. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And Jesus compares God not with a good man, but with a godless man to emphasize the enormous difference between the unjust judge and the righteous God. A judge who acts purely out of selfishness, meanness, being predictive, ignoring her. But yet, if this unjust, wicked judge could avenge the widow whom he looked down on, ignored and had her to wait for a while, how much more will the righteous God avenge us? Oh, hallelujah. The prayer of faith is a powerful weapon that will change the heart of evil men. It is prayer time, saints. It is prayer time, people. When I spoke in, in first, uh, first Chronicles chapter 7, it's my people. Hallelujah, that's called by my name. We got to repent, we got to pray, and we got to ask God to heal this land. Amen. 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 We cannot step into tomorrow. I do not want, today is Sunday, and I don't want to step, here I am today, but I'm already going to step into Monday, being anxious beforehand. Because with doubts, fears, and worries, because tomorrow not even promised to us. Tomorrow not even, even promised to me. So why should I carry a burden over to tomorrow when tomorrow can take care of itself? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, today is not promised to us. So we can stand still and see the salvation of God. Stand still so God can show who he is. Hallelujah. God said, I am that I am. So let I am that I am take care of you. Amen. Amen. And in my conclusion, this is also a beautiful scripture and a prayer. Psalms 33 verses 12 and down to 18 and 22. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And we want United States of America to come back under being one nation under God. We got to pray that, amen. amen. And the people whom have, he has chosen for his own inheritance. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. The word fear means respect, honor, and reverence him. Hallelujah. Upon them that hope and have faith in his mercy. To deliver their soul from death, and listen to this, and to keep them alive in famine. Who can keep you alive in famine but God? Hallelujah. Our soul, the scripture says, wait for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him. Let's not hold our head down when we go through this storm, whatever we have lost. Put on a praise song and worship him. Don't wait till, it's, till the test is over. Shout now. Don't wait for the storm is over. Let's shout now. Come on. Shout now. Hallelujah. Shout now. Hallelujah. Let that mercy of the Lord be upon us according to we have hope in thee. Now let the church say amen, amen, amen to the word of God. Amen, amen, amen. amen, amen, amen. amen, amen, amen. Now, in the beginning Jesus of Jesus' teachings, he asks this all-important question. I want to bring us back to that question. When the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on earth? And our answer is, we proclaim, we profess, and we confess, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And we don't know the day or the hour when he's coming, but we will 
wait on the Lord. Let's give him a hand. God bless you, and may you have a blessed week. In Jesus' name.